So the next time you need to factor a quadratic trinomial when a is equal to one and you have it in the form of x squared plus bx plus c, I want you to think about these three steps or follow these three steps so therefore you can do it in your head. And the first thing I want you to understand is going to be the factors of c. Now c is going to be your last number in your quadratic trinomial, right? And you can see in this example it is positive 24 and over here it's a negative 24. I want you to be able to understand the factors of your c. Actually, I don't want you. You have to know the factors of your c. And more importantly, you have to be able to understand to be able to do that in your head and to kind of visualize them if you're going to be doing factoring in your head. Now, I don't want you to think about them, the factors as like a list, right? Because factors are numbers that evenly divide into a, another number. But I want you to think about them as a list of products. And I also want you to think about them only as the positive version. We will address the negative version with our other two steps. So let's just look at 24. Forget about it being positive or negative. Let's just deal with it just as a positive 24. What are the numbers that evenly divide into 24? Those are what we call the factors. Now again, write them as a product rather than just a list of numbers. So what I always like to do is always start with the original number, 24, and then multiply times one. Those are factors of 24. Then I just kind of go in descending order. I could also say 12 times two. I could also say a eight times three. I could also say a six times four. All of these list of products multiply to give me a 24 right? So these are all going to be factors, but this is what I want to kind of visualize or kind of think about in my head. Now we need to move to the next step. And the next step is to understand, are we doing a factoring problem that's going to be a sum or are we looking for a difference? Now to understand, are we dealing with a sum or a difference? We're going to look at the last term. When the last term is positive, we're going to be looking for a sum. When the last term is negative, we're going to be looking for a difference. Now, what do I mean a sum or a difference? What I mean is a sum or a difference of our factors to get our middle term. So my last number is positive, right? So then I think, okay, let's think about the factors, right? So I'm thinking about these factors in my head and it's a positive 24. So I'm thinking about, all right, which of these two factors add to give me my middle term, which in this case is a 25. And hopefully obviously you can see in front of it. But again, like if you see like six and four, give me 10. Nope, that's not it. I need 25. And hopefully you recognize, oh, it's going to be 24 and it's going to be a one, right? So therefore that easily adds to give us 25. Now, there, that's not going to be completely what we need to do for factoring though. There's one more step that we need to understand. And that's going to be three is going to be is B positive or is going to be negative, okay? Because remember, when we're dealing with the factors, I told you to only focus on the positive factors, right? 24 times one. But also, you should know that negative 24 and negative one are also factors or also multiply to give you 24. Negative 12 and negative two also multiply. But if you're trying to do this in your head and you're trying to think of all these numbers, it gets kind of be a little bit too much. So I want you to focus on the factors, just the positive factors. I want you to focus on if it's a sum or a difference, when in this case it's a sum. And then I want you to focus if B is positive or negative. In this case, my B is positive. So therefore, my two factors, right? They're gonna multiply, give me 24, and then they're gonna add to give me positive. Well, if my two factors are adding to give me a positive 24, or sorry, 25, then they have to be both positive, right? It has to be a positive 24 and a positive one because a negative 24 and a negative one would give me a negative 25 as a sum. So therefore, I can quickly factor this as x plus 24 times an x plus one. Now in this next example, we have a negative, right? So we're looking for the difference. So I have my list of factors. Again, I'm not worried about which one's positive, which one's negative. I just wanna think of the difference. It's not gonna be 24 and one, right? Because the difference of 24 and one is 23, right? Those are really far apart. So I wanna think of my factors that have a difference of five. And again, hopefully you recognize that's gonna be an eight and a three. Now, one thing that's sometimes kind of helpful is once you've identified the ones that have a difference, just write them out as a product of two trinomials, right? All quadratic um, trinomials can be written as a product of two binomials. So you can write them like this. Now we, we have the different, we know it's a difference, right? So we have eight and three. We know we listed the factors. Now we got to understand is B positive or negative? My B is positive. Okay. So now we've got to be able to think to ourselves, all right, if if my B is positive, like I need to make sure I'm subtracting a smaller value, right? So, you know, cause you, you have two options, right? It's either eight minus three or it's three minus eight, right? <laughs> like which of those is going to produce a positive five and hopefully recognize it's going to be an eight minus three. Now you can think about that as a difference and, but sometimes it does kind of get confusing because how does that correspond to what the values are inside my product? Well, a way I like to be able to kind of write this is just rewrite your difference actually back as an addition problem. You could write this as an eight plus a negative three. You could write this as a three plus a negative eight. So therefore you know that eight is positive and my three is going to be a negative, right? And therefore that's gonna be effective form of your trinomial. So let's go and take a look at some other examples here. 
And in this case now, again, my last term, right? My last term is positive. So we know it's a sum. Okay. And we both have six. So let's go and list out the factors of six. Now this one's gonna be a little bit easier. So we have six times one and we have three times two. We know we're going to multiply to give us six, but now my factor is going to be add to give us a negative, right? So obviously I know six and one give me seven, three and two gives me five. So I know it's going to be three and two, right? But if they're going to add to give me negative five, they both have to be negative, right? And again, negative times a negative is going to give me a positive six. So that's why that works. So therefore this is going to be an X minus three times a X minus two. Now over here, a lot of students will think, yeah, oh, sometimes it's going to be the same thing. Like, cause they add a negative three plus a negative two and they get a negative five, but be careful right? Again, we're looking for the difference. That's why it's so important. You have the factors, six, one, three, two. But when you see that last number is a negative, you got to think difference. Think difference. This is sum. This is difference. So which of your factors have a difference of five? Three and two have a difference of one, right? Six and one have a difference of five. And now my difference is negative, right? So I got to think, all right, so what, how am I going to get a negative five? Is that going to be a six minus one? Or is that going to be a one minus a six, right? Because again, if these two factors multiply to give me six, but now I want them to multiply to give me a negative six, one of them is going to be a negative, right? So again, we can rewrite this as a six plus a negative one. So I could say the two factors are, you know, six times negative one, or I could write this as a one plus a negative six. So I could say one times a negative six. It could work out that way as well. But again, both of these are going to have a difference of five. It just the difference, the difference is, this has a difference of a positive five. These have a difference of a negative five. So hopefully you recognize you're like, oh, we need a negative five. So these are going to be my two factors. So therefore I can rewrite this as a X times an X minus six. So now the next time that you need to factor in your head, hopefully you can go ahead and revert or think about these three steps and be able to do it nice and smooth. Hopefully this video was helpful for you. And if it was, I look forward to seeing you in the next video. Cheers.